Hello, and welcome back to Fusion Entertainment. For my next review in the Blumhouse um, Productions Company films that I made in the past few years, and for um, 2019's Ma. Now, I saw this, I just see this one at theaters. I got this one on Black Friday because I was trying to to get all the Blum House stuff I didn't have. Um, I also got Us as well. Um, but um, I kind of like this movie. I actually do kind of like this movie. I, I like the story behind um, the plot and then all the twists in the movie. But I can certainly see how this wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea. Because this this is kind of like a movie you will watch out a... Um, a house party after going to a bar where you can get drunker and, and more fucked up from drinking alcohol or something. That's kind of, it's kind of that type, type of movie you would do that with. But at the basis of this film, there's actually a plot and there's actually um, an interesting narrative and a um, cult lesson to be taught to the world in this film, which is very interesting. Um, basically, and I'll do the plot without giving out names of the characters. I'll just do the plot in a very, very good and interesting way. This is this very quick, but first, to my opinion, I thought that uh, the film just had good cinematography in it. Um, in my opinion, it's just an overall fun movie. Now, um, let's talk about the uh, plot real quick. The plot of the film is about um, trouble-making teenagers in high school, high school students, who are too young to buy alcohol, and they're trying to um, find them a alternate means to get alcohol so they can party. And they come across this, um, I say, 48 to 53, possibly 55 year old black woman, um, and she, well, humors them on. But what they don't know is this woman has a history with their parents. She was um, psychologically abused, and um, humiliated in the highest of calibers and traumatized by these children's parents when she was a kid, their age. And um, she's actually invading their lives, stalking them, and finding the means of opportunity to get back at their parents. And in that term, it kind of becomes something close to what's called in between a psychological thriller and a slasher film, but without much slashing in it, because not a lot of slashing goes on in this film. There are a few people that die in this film, but it's not it's not like your typical slasher film. It's more psychologically based and and thriller based, but more or less, yes, it's a slasher movie. Um, And yeah, that's basically the plot of the film. So very, very simple one. This is a very simple movie, though. But like I said, a, a very, very fun movie. Um, the quality of the film. Again, this film was, um, like all the other, other ones, um, was shot on 35mm film, and it was in 2.35.1 theaters. But modified, obviously, to 2.39.1 for home entertainment use. Yes. Um, this film... Um, it's a low budget movie, so there is no 4K version of the film. Um, and it did not have, for say, DTSX or Dolby Atmos during the actual run. It just had 5.1 Dolby Surround, which means that a DTS HD 5.1 sound presentation, which is what it does have, um, really does captivate that sound experience that the film had in the theaters quite well. Um, Video definitely um, is your typical universal like looking video, um, just like us is. But us did have a lot more singularity for this. But this one right here, um, this is a typical looking, you know, digital, dimmer, neutral balanced um, digital looking movie, just like most Universal F Studios films are, and that's usually the case with these Blumhouse films. There's not really a whole lot of them that have good use of singularity. Which is why I like to get out in Us a whole lot more than this in terms of how the, the movie looks. Um, but yeah, lots of warms, lots of neutrals.
Um, the um, the audio presentation, pretty mundane, pretty um, standard for a 5.1 DTS HDMA source. There's not really a, a lot of effects in this movie. It's not a heavy effect movie, but it does have a, a bit of a surround of effect every now and then, or in my case, overhead effect every now and then in the uh, movie. I don't expect anything special out of the, uh, the um, 5.1 DTS MA source track um, presentation if you have a good sound system. Don't expect it to to be demo worthy or, you know, a big experience, but it's there. That's um, pretty much how I look at this one. Um, like I said, just a fun movie. Nothing to write home about, not overly special, but it definitely is a fun film. I say it does has a good thriller element to it and all that stuff. So, um, love it or hate it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed my opinion of uh, 2019's Ma from um, Blumhouse Productions. I know these two um, reviews were a little bit fast, but you know what? It's daytime. I want to get through these as fast as I can. Um, and I'll see you guys next time for my review of Happy Death Day to you, which is the follow up to Happy Death Day. And um, I got one I did see in theaters, and then we'll talk about that when I get to that film. But since we have a few little minutes, um, something that's been going in the, in the news a lot on, on movie news <clears throat> is this whole Tom Hardy is cast as James Bond. Um, I knew I was going to mention this at some point. Um, that would not work. You take someone like me. <clears throat> I know I have a little bit of a five-class shadow on my face right now, but when you take a look at somebody like me, it's believable that someone like me could play James Bond, or somebody who actually was born in Britain, or in, or in the UK, period, that comes across as someone from the UK, unlike me, in which I come across as somebody from the UK, but I wasn't born in the UK. Um, I could have that toughness, that brawlness, in that sort of darker, more um, masculine, sinister, phantom look. With hair on my face, short hair, long hair, wearing um, polo shirt, khakis, wearing a suit, wearing a tux, I could, I could pull it off and be believable. If you actually take a look at Tom Hardy in his career um, and know how he really sounds in real life, he would not make a good James Bond because um, his voice is too high-pitched. He has one of those um, very Scottish, very Irish type of voices. And, you know, can you imagine going from Bond, James Bond, to Bond, James Bond? It just wouldn't work. There's also the fact that he is much shorter than Daniel Craig is, and people already give Daniel Craig enough shit enough about him being 5'11 instead of 6'2 like the character actually is in the books. Well, Tom Hardy is 5'9. Now, I know that he doesn't look like he's 5'9 playing Mad Max in Mad Max Fury Road, but he is 5'9. It wouldn't work. And the other thing is, he depends heavily on altering his voice to a combination between a 1940s New York in a North London near Jason Statham type of voice to pull off a lot of his characters. Because he doesn't never use his real voice. There's also the fact that if you have hair on his face, yeah, he looks manly. But if you shave his face clean, like it, for example, how it is in Legend, Red, Legend's a great movie with Tom Hardy, but, um, Tom Hardy still looks like a little boy or teenager in a suit. Can you take someone like that? He's very youthful, very boyish looking, and put him in the world of James Bond and make it believable? No. He's also 43 years old. Now, if you want to go for a 43-year-old man and break the void of the 37, 35-year-old man playing James Bond in beginning of Duran, or Duran as James Bond, I would go for more of a Tom Ellis to play James Bond because he has everything that James Bond is supposed to have. 
Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put that out there because uh, that's uh, something that has been around. And I will mention, yeah, in my thoughts on Tom Hardy's James Bond in the the, the title of this. Um, but um, hope, hope you guys have been enjoying um, Holder Fest 2020. And I will see you guys next time for my next review. Because we are not anywhere near done yet. So I will see you guys next time. Hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on, on movie news as well. Until then.